Hello everyone, my name is Leo and I am going to explain to you how the Coimbra protocol works. The Coimbra protocol is a therapy to treat autoimmune diseases and it works with high doses of vitamin D. Vitamin D is a really important hormone for our body. It is produced when we are exposed to sunlight or we can absorb it from food. In its basic form, it is not active. It needs um, to be activated once in the kidneys and twice in the liver. The active form of vitamin D has a lot of functions, but we are interested only in three functions. The main function of vitamin D is the regulation of our immune system. The second function of vitamin D is the stimulation of the calcium absorption from food in the intestine. And the third function we are interested in is the inhibition of PTH. So, active vitamin D regulates the immune system, increases the absorption of calcium from food, and decreases the level of PTH in our blood. To understand how the Coimbra protocol works, we have to understand the regulation of the calcium level in our blood. The calcium is needed by our cells to work properly and it is really important that the calcium level is always in a, a constant range. It must not be too high or too low. Every day we lose uh, some calcium through the you th through our kidneys and it goes in the urine so we lose every day a part of the calcium in our blood and we need to absorb the calcium that we lose from the food to maintain the concentration always constant if we don't eat food that contains calcium or if our active vitamin D level is too low and it does not stimulate the absorption of calcium from food, the calcium level sinks because we lose it, we lose a part of the calcium through the urine. And so when the calcium level sinks, it activates this low calcium level activates the PTH. This PTH activates uh, our second source of calcium and the second source consists in our bones. So if the calcium is low this increases the level of PTH and the level of PTH, the increased level of PTH, increases the absorption of calcium from the bones so that the level of calcium in the blood remains constant. If the level of calcium in our blood is too high, this sinks the level of PTH because we don't need any calcium from the bones we have already too much in the blood. Now let's see what happens in people with autoimmune diseases. People with autoimmune diseases have uh, the immune system that does not work properly. And this is due to um, low stimulation of the immune system from the active vitamin D. The reason of this pure, poor stimulation of the immune system can be 
in the activation of vitamin D. If this does not work properly, our immune system will, will, will receive only a small part of uh, signal from the active vitamin D. Or the, there can be also a problem in the signaling itself. So the problem can be here or it can be here. Or we can have both problems. If the immune system does not work well because it's not stimulated by our active vitamin D, we will have autoimmune diseases. These autoimmune diseases can be multiple sclerosis or Hashimoto thyroiditis or lupus and so on. So, how does this Coimbra protocol work? It's really simple. Um, with the Coimbra protocol, we will increase the intake of vitamin D from food, taking really high doses of vitamin D every day. And this will increase the stimulation of the active vitamin D to the immune system. This uh, in increased vitamin D level will not repair the um, problems that there are in the activation or in the signaling. It will only increase the doses. Uh, let's say our immune system needs 100 units of vitamin D. If this system works properly, we will need only 100 units of uh, vitamin D from sun and food and this 100 units will be converted in 100 units of active vitamin D and the stimulation of our immune system will correspond to a stimulation of 100 units of active vitamin D. If this does not work well because we have an autoimmune disease um, the level of the active vitamin D will be decreased. So let's say we have here 100 units of vitamin D and only 50 units of active vitamin D. And the um, signaling also will have problems. So only 10 units of vitamin D will influence, will stimulate our immune system. So, if we increase the, by 10 times this vitamin D from our food intake, the transmission of the stimulation of the immune system will still be broken. But if here we have, let's say, 1000 units of vitamin D, here we will have 500 and the signal that arrives to our immune system will be 100, 100, so it will work correctly and the autoimmune disease will stop. So what um, the Coimbra protocol does is increase the doses of vitamin D as high as possible to stimulate correctly our immune system. There is a problem. Mm, the problem is that these high doses of vitamin D not, uh, do not only influence our immune system, but they also influence the uptake of calcium from food. This is uh, really dangerous. Um, too much calcium intake is toxic. We already know that the calcium level in our blood has to be constant, not too high. If the calcium level is too high, we will have kidney stones and we can also have kidney failure. So this is really dangerous. If the active form of vitamin D is, gets too high, this will be very dangerous for our kidneys and we have to avoid it. 
So what we, how, how can we know how much, how, how high we can increase the doses of vitamin D without the toxic effect of the high vitamin D levels? We cannot measure the action, uh, the, the stimulation of our immune system. And we also cannot measure the stimulation of the calcium intake from the food. The only thing that we can measure is how much uh, the active vitamin D inhibits the PTH. When the level of PTH is low, but not too low, it means that the signaling of the active vitamin D is really high, not only on the PTH, but also in our, to our immune system and to the calcium uptake, but it is not too high to be considered toxic. The problem is that the PTH level is regulated not only by the vitamin D, but also by calcium level in our blood. With the Coimbra protocol, the uptake of calcium through food will be high, so we will have to avoid the intake of calcium from food having a low calcium diet. This will not only um, help us to avoid the influence of the calcium level in blood to the PTH, it will also help us to preserve our kidneys from kidney stones and kidney failure. Another thing that is really important is to drink a lot of water. If we drink a lot of water, the concentration of the calcium in our blood will be low, not too low, because we absorb a lot of calcium, and it will also protect our kidneys. So, um, it is important if we practice uh, this, if we use this therapy, that we have a, a constant concentration of calcium in our blood. This will avoid the influence of the calcium concentration to the PTH level. And so we can use the PTH level to measure the activity of the calcium in our organism. And we can avoid a toxic doses of, of vitamin D. There is also another problem with these uh, high doses of vitamin D because the high doses of vitamin D will uh, increase the calcium absorption from the bones. So the, um, the PTH will be inhibited and will not absorb calcium from bones, but uh, this absorption of calcium from the bones will be caused by the active vitamin D. To uh, avoid it, we have to exercise a lot, not too much, but it is good if we walk a lot or run for 20-30 minutes every day. As you can see, this therapy is um, dangerous if not done correctly, so don't do it by yourself. Go to a medic who 
knows about it, who knows the right doses of vitamin D to prescribe, and who knows how to measure correctly the activity of the vitamin D. I'm sorry for my bad English, but it's not my native language. I hope you understood what uh, I tried to explain. And bye-bye. Thank you.